Hey guys, James Sane here. Today is a quick video about hemodialysis catheters. Now, if you're a nurse who's allowed to pull non-tunnel central lines, you should be allowed to pull temporary hemodialysis catheters. Not the tunnel, but the temporary. I know as a nurse, you're probably not allowed to touch your patient's uh, hemodialysis catheter. I work in a cath lab slash IR combo lab where we put these things in. You can't touch them because the nephrologist doesn't want anyone messing it up. For example, clotting it off, infecting it, accidentally bolusing the patient with heparin, dislodging it. Um, it's a life-saving device that so would have to be emergently or urgently replaced or put back in. And because you're not allowed to touch it, um, most nurses aren't comfortable with, with hemodialysis catheters. Um, and that's what I'm here to tell you about. So when you look at it, yes, there's one port that's blue signifying venous and there's a red port signifying arterial, but it's merely a dual lumen central line in a vein that can sustain high pressures like when blood is being removed and returned with a dialysis machine. There's nothing arterial about it. So let's look at some examples. Now, when people talk about central lines, that means the catheter is in central circulation in the inferior or superior vena cava. Short femoral lines are not central lines, but people might call them that. And you could possibly have a subclavian line, but I'm not even showing an example here. I don't see people really doing that too much anymore. Uh, the risk for a pneumothorax for the patient is much higher. Now, you could have an internal, external jugular catheter. However, it's usually internal because that's such a larger vein. And your procedure, when it comes time to removing it, it it'd be the same whether it's internal or external jugular. And you could have a left or right femoral vein for hemodialysis catheter. It's not really a central line, but the same concept applies. Now, tunnel central lines, hemodialysis catheters, it's a different story. They're still most often internal jugular, but the catheter does not exit at the insertion site. The accessible end of the catheter is tunneled under the subcutaneous tissue of the chest and exits somewhere on the chest. And why do we have these? Patients usually cannot go home or to a sniff or an LTAC with a temporary line, but they can with a tunnel line. It's more secure, less likely to become infected, and it's intended for long-term use as compared to a, a temporary line. Now, when it comes time for removal of the temporary line, you treat it like any other central line. Follow your hospital's protocol for central line removal as it relates to like, cleaning it and preferably having the site higher than the heart. <laughs> Removing the suture, having the patient exhale and removal, all those things to prevent air embolus and infection. Now, rest assured the temporary hemodialysis catheter is just a dual lumen central line in the vein as far as you're concerned at this point, you have reached the point where there's no concern about the nurse messing it up or making it non-functional. You're removing it. The patient has reached a point where they no longer need it. Now, you're most likely not allowed to remove a tunneled central line or a tunneled hemodialysis catheter. I'm only talking about non-tunneled. All right, I hope this helps with your understanding of temporary and tunneled hemodialysis catheters. Uh, that if you're comfortable with discontinuing a central line, you should be comfortable discontinuing a temporary dialysis catheter. All right, guys, thanks so much. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up. It will help my channel. And if you found the information helpful or useful, consider subscribing to the channel. And if you do, remember to turn on notifications so that you don't miss when the next video comes out. All right, guys, thanks so much. We'll see you in the next video.